Welcome to the Art of Dress. Today, I'm very happy to begin the discussion of artistry and explain to you how this affects style and, of course, your style. So thank you for coming and subscribing. As I have explained a little bit before, there are four artistries. Everyone has an artistry as much as you have a style, and the two things are intertwined. So they are independent. There is no connection. If you're this artistry, you're not this style, nothing. So this provides a lot of diversity in the human race because everyone has a style, and then there are all different combinations of styles and artistries. So, in the case of the elaborate classic, we have four artistries who were top models all in the same time period. And it just happens that the elaborate classic was a very, a very common style in that time period in the very late 80s and the early 90s. So this gives me an opportunity to really show you how different the artistry makes the style. So first I'm going to introduce to you the four artistries. This is the architectural Giselle Bunchen, and she is of course elaborate classic. And you can see that she wears the crossed halter emphasis at the solar plexus, at the waist, at the hip, and then hopefully the killer shoe. And that is her style inspiration, the number five. So the next artistry is the sculptural, and this is Cindy Crawford. And her dress is a very similar dress, uh, expressing all these things. This was sort of like the dress of the, of the decade. And it's, you can see it's also extremely effective on her. So I just want to remind you about the fabrics of the Elaborate Classic. So the fabrics of the Elaborate Classic, when we discussed fabrics, we discussed three fabric qualities. And the balance was the fabric quality that came from the classic family. And then in addition to that, the elaborate classic got shine and print. So shine, print, and balance. Now, there are two fabric qualities that the elaborate classic does not get. And one of them is softness, and the other one is texture. So the, the archetype for the elaborate classic would be shine, print, balance, firmness, and, uh, and uh, smoothness, okay? So let me say that again. Uh, I try to say them in order. I don't always make it shine, smooth, balance, print, and firm. Those are the five fabric qualities. And so what we're going to look at with each of our elaborate classics is how does the artistry influence the fabric portfolio? But what does not get influenced is everyone always tries to wear a balanced fabric because they are members of the classics. And here you see Christy Turlington and she is the harmonic elaborate classic, also a really successful and very famous model. And then lastly, Yasmin Gori in French, but Gary in English, so I have a tendency to try and stay in the language I'm speaking, so I usually say Gary, but of course if you speak French, you're going to say Yasmin Gori. Um, and here she is in another example of this uh, archetypal dress almost for the elaborate classic. So now I'd like to walk you through each of the artistries you've been introduced, and I'd like to start with Giselle, the architectural. And I want to explain to you why I came up with the term architectural. And that is because the, this archetype, or this, this expression, I should say, this, this uh, artist, artistic expression, the architectural elaborate classic, is really looking at the forces of space. The vertical, of course, tending towards always using the vertical uh, when possible, although horizontals can also work. Um, but that balance, symmetry, and you can see that stripes are like a perfect example of this. A stripe really is almost like an architectural statement 
for any style. And stripes are so successful for her. Now, stripes are not the kind of print that the Elaborate Classic normally wears. All Elaborate Classics can wear print. But this is the, um, the kind of print that they normally wear is like a floral or I call it a dream print because it could be butterflies, it could be rhinoceroses, it could be any, any natural form, but it would be not used in a sort of realistic way. So you're not going to have a jungle scene with an, a rhino in this case of elaborate classic. You would see something just completely divorced from reality floating around like a dream. So oftentimes you'll see florals and they don't have stems, they don't have leaves, they're just all floating around and that's a perfect example of the normal print for an elaborate classic. Really only the architecturals are so fantastic in stripes. And this you see here with Giselle in this beautiful dress with the crossed halter, all the other aspects of the five, the, so, the solar plexus, the waist, and she gets hip emphasis. She, she emphasizes the emphasis, you could say, with her the way she's uh, holding her hip. And that is because she is such an amazing model. And you can see why she was a top model, because she really uses her body uh, to kind of um, link the, her own natural energy with the clothes that she's wearing. So she supplements emphasis by the way she stands. And I'll show you another example of this in just a minute. So I just wanted to uh, think about for one second, the if your style is like your house. So, so think about in the olden, really olden days, ancient times, they used to say, your body is a temple. So we don't really live in temples and some people still go to temples and a lot of people don't. So let's say a house. Your body is your house and that's your style, your style of house. And um, your artistry is like where your house is located. So what I mean by that is that the architectural would kind of be located at the North Pole or the South Pole where the interaction is more with the forces of space you're not going to feel things like the equator or like the temperate zone if you're on the poles. You're going to feel the magnificence of the galaxies and you're going to feel the vertical, the horizontal, the balance, the symmetry, all of the aspects of architecture. So in the case of Giselle, you can see here that this vertical stripe is extremely effective on her. And here is another example now, a horizontal stripe. And notice that the horizontal stripe is in the skirt. The stripe is really the black and it's a thin stripe. That works great for her because she is an alpha style, a, a style where the energy connects more closely to the body. And so a thinner stripe or strap or garment more tight is gonna be the most more effective. Now, I was talking about how a great model, many of the really successful models are very good at working with the mediating between the energy of their style and the energy that's built into their clothing. And in this case, you see it here because, so the stripe is in the skirt, as I said, that's where her style focal point is, her main focal point, which is her true hip. Perfect. The fabric is smooth, the fabric is firm, the fabric has shine. Amazing. Now you also see that she has emphasis at her waist, which we're hoping for, also the solar plexus. What's happening here at the neck? And also the fact that this little sweatshirt idea is a bit soft for her. So she's strengthening the focal point at the neck, which is the sharpest of the focal points. It's the, where the, the crossed halter normally comes by lifting her head up and leaning back a little bit and making that the strongest aspect. And so that really strengthens that neck and her that fifth point for her. Well, the fifth is actually the shoe, but we don't show that normally. And then you can see that this also kind of mitigates from the fact that she has a standard shoulder. You don't even notice it because what you're really getting is this kind of a halter look because of the way she's standing. Go Giselle, just amazing. 
Here's another example of a, of a horizontal stripe. Again, super successful because it is not too wide, but just stunning on her. And once again, getting the black at her neck, the solar plexus through the midriff, um, then the waist and the true hip. And so amazing for her, just gorgeous. And her final example, showing again a vertical stripe. And in this case, uh, what's really, really cute with this dress, because it's not the most alpha dress, it's kind of in the middle. It's not super omega, but it's a little bit bordering, but it does a couple of things that are really helpful. One, of course, is the accessorizing of the purse, which is pulling emphasis right to the center. Another uh, thing is that, another really important thing is the little black buttons on the skirt that are giving her emphasis uh, right at the, the sort of true hip area. And then she is also emphasizing the forces of space of front and behind by using a high-low hem. So, and firm fabric and print and very, very um, successful for her. Very wonderful, in fact. So now let's go on to sculptural. So if sculptural is uh, the place, the placement of the house, the elaborate classic house as our analogy, this would be in the, the tropics. And if you imagine a tropical garden and all of the plants, the leaves are uh, firm, usually firm and curved, very lush, right? Uh, the sculptural as an, um, as an artistry conveys a feeling of lushness to all the people that are in it. And then also think of the flowers because you'll have an orchid, again, a uh, firm and curved. And then you also might have, you know, plumeria and there are other, other flowers that fit this. So the sculptural is connected to the center of the earth. Um, and people that are in sculptural feel this, this connection to the earth. So this dress, does a few things that make it really wonderful for Cindy. Uh, one thing, the most important thing is that she has this, I guess it's um, a kind of a gathered look going around the skirt, her focal point being at her two hips. So the most important place is the lower half of her silhouette and it's forming firm texture in the skirt, so successful. Now, because the gold is having a slight contrast with the background material, it's also looking kind of like a print, which is also great and shine. So she has her, so her fabric portfolio is the shine that everyone has. Instead of having a smooth fabric, she wears texture, firm texture, not soft texture, not uh, not, not a, a cable knit sweater, firm texture. Balanced weave, she's a classic, one of the classic family. She wears um, print, and so this is working a print into it, kind of. She doesn't have to wear print. She, ha she wants to wear texture and balanced weave always. And a firm fabric is by definition balanced weave. And since her fabrics are firm, she's getting that. And then finally, the last one is firmness. And so she has it. So there you have the, the fabric portfolio for her version of the elaborate classic. And because she substitutes smooth for texture, it's like a contradiction, but it's what the sculptural elaborate classic tries to do in every outfit. The next example for Cindy is this really cute dress where she has, again, the corset idea that gives her the solar plexus, the waist and the hip. And then the texture is built in to the um, fabric and kind of layers here. So, and layers by definition offer, uh, add texture as well. So very successful for her. This is one of my favorites. And I'm just hoping that the, those amazing firm flowers extend into the skirt. I don't really know. 
but you can see how this is blending the idea of texture and print because this is the kind of floral that is the perfect print for the elaborate classic because the flowers don't exist like this in nature. Different sizes, different, um, the shapes are pretty similar, but they're just not congregated so closely. So it's very, uh, very cute for her. And then a last example is this dress where you have a lace, which gives you, can give you a form of texture. Better if it were even re-embroidered, a firmer lace, but it's on top of a firm fabric in the skirt. So very successful and gives her the five points of her, um, of her inspiration that we keep mentioning, the neck, solar plexus, waist, hip, and shoe. And then lastly, uh, it gives the, the example of a floral print in her skirt particularly. So very, very cute for her. So the third artistry is harmonic. So what's happening with harmonic? So harmonic, the fabric quality is shine. So this is perfectly in accordance with the natural fabric portfolio for elaborate classic. The only difference is that shine becomes super important for, for Christy. So what is a harmonic and why does it have that name? So harmonic would not actually be so much, um, well, it would be the temperate zone if it were on the earth, but the, the sort of experience is not so connected to the earth proper. It's not looking up above, like into the galaxies, like the architectural, it's not looking to the earth itself, but it's more paying attention to the environment. And this is where weather in the temperate zones, uh, weather becomes super important because it's so changeable. And what you're noticing, and this is everything that's happening in the environment. And so because there's so much happening in the environment, the harmonic is the, the sort of reverberations and there's more happening in the styling and more happening even into the prints because there's an, a more um, need for detail in all harmonics. So this top is giving the five, it's not, ex well, it actually does extend to the hip because of it ends right at her true hip, but it gives the neck, the solar plexus where the black is starting there in the button. The waist is super uh, emphasized, but the fabric is bringing a lot of shine into um, this expression. And this looks amazing on Christy. So here is another example of that shine for her. Again, it's pretty good. The earrings are actually bringing some focus up to the throat. And then she's got the variegation of the, um, of the embellishment of fabric and extra shine right at her neckline. Um, but extra shine also in the skirt. And then the more black areas are actually her other focal points, the solar plexus, waist, etc. But the shine all by itself, there you see it's not, it's not even done perfectly in accordance with elaborate classic, but the shine is just wonderful for Christy. And then um, another example is this amazing dress. Again, the shine really overcomes the fact that this is giving her this wide V neckline. Uh, it's not so important here. The earrings help a lot and the shine really helps with the overall silhouette, I mean, the overall expression, it's just actually fantastic. And then shine again. And in this case, the, the, um, the black is helping bring the focus into her throat. Her, this uh, collar that's coming in like a shawl collar is ending the ornament at her solar plexus. She has a tie belt at her waist and those ornamented pockets are her style focal point at her true hip. But again, it's the shine that transforms this into something really extraordinary for her. So now we'll move on to Yasmin, our composite. So in the case of the composite, now what we're saying is the com why does it have the name composite? And that is because this is like the sort of amalgamation of the other artistries. 
And what she combines is the, the curvature of the sculptural. She has the softness of the, um, of the harmonic. And then she has the, although the softness is not the fabric quality, but the harmonic is basically soft. And then she also has the, um, the, the solid forms of the architectural and that is the composite. And her fabric quality is softness. It's the most important thing. As you see in this dress, where the fluidity that she gets in her fabric, still a balanced weave, it still holds its shape. It's not a truly fluid drape, but it has a, a very nice drape and that drapey quality really brings the emphasis into the center of her body and all of the focal points that come from that. And then with the, the most important focal point being right at her true hip where she has the placket and the buttons and the extra folding. But the softness is in this case combined with shine and the balanced weave, but um, it's really successful for her and just one of my favorite dresses for her of all times. And that's hard to find because she has so many fantastic dresses. She uh, again shows the really amazing quality of um, using her body. Here she uses her hand to strengthen the hip focal point, which is the, the least emphasized of the five focal points on this dress, but still a super amazing soft dress in white, which is her, her prime color, I should say neutral, is a form of white just so successful on her. I love this one also because the crossed halter is done so differently here. And really it would, if she didn't have this neckline soft at her neck, but really strengthened here with all these folds, uh, it wouldn't emphasize the cross of the halter as much as it does. So it really works. And then again, she hits all of her um, focal points on her body and the softness and the strength at her hip, really effective and beautiful. And her last soft dress is this wonderful example. And in this case, the collar, the sharpness of those collar points really um, brings the kind of, sort of a, um, like it's a, uh, simulates that crossed halter, the sharpness of the crossed halter at the throat. And then she has the other focal points as well. This is really interesting because in this case, you see that the preferred use of color is using coordinates for the elaborate classic, not monochromatic and not separates. And this is what you see here, different versions of this kind of a, um, of a grape, of a, a, a soft lilac, not too strong. And then of course, because this is her style color as well is grape. So she combines the different colors. It's super effective. Again, the soft fabric is overwhelmingly beautiful in this outfit. So these are the four artistries, the composite, the harmonic, the sculptural, and the architectural. And if you are human, you are one of those four artistries and it is affecting your style and your expression in all these different ways. So this is just the fabric aspect and how it affects style, um, in sort of an immediate way. The other aspects of artistry affect style also, but they also affect your makeup, your styling, your um, hair, and your jewelry. So I'm gonna continue with artistry next week, and I look forward to seeing you again. So thank you for coming and subscribing, and please take care.